Here's what Roger Goodell said on the tampering conclusions. The investigators found tampering violations of unprecedented scope and severity. Mm -hmm. I know of no prior instance of a team violating the prohibition on tampering with both a head coach and star player to the potential detriment of multiple other clubs over a period of several years. Similarly, I know of no prior instance in which ownership was so directly involved in the violations. Okay, fine. Strong statement. Strong. Why? And this is a point Matt Casey made yesterday as we're processing all of this. Why in the hell? Is it only a first round pick and a fourth round I pick? I think everybody is. And a one and a half million dollar fine and a six week suspension for Steven Ross. I mean, they were caught hand pressed to the bottom of the cookie jar. And other hand, basically giving a middle finger to anybody who was paying attention. Yeah. And that's all they got right. for this unprecedented in scope and severity instance of tampering. And I think one of the reasons is because everybody does it. It would have been very difficult Probably, Mike. to truly throw the book at them for this right. because they allow it to happen. They they don't have the mechanism to enforce it. You can't it. They stop don't have it the everywhere. Time to enforce it. You, you're chasing you know, the old uh, Rocky, too, when he's chasing the chicken. Yeah. You're chasing 32 right. chickens simultaneously yeah. to try to prove every instance of tampering in the NFL. So it's in the rare occasions when it falls into your lap or it's a convenient diversion from the thing they really should have been punishing them for that we say, okay, we'll get him for this and this will be the punishment and we'll move on. But I, it should have been... It's still a it good should punishment, have been a greater but punishment. I think everybody, I think everybody kind of has that same thought that we, we, you, you're having right now. I think there's a lot of people when you read the statement, you know, you start to actually read what went down this covert operation coup d'état that was going on, and I think everybody was a little bit like, "Wow, just that's it? That's all you're going to lose after all of that?" But I think your point is the real one. Are you just going to work in coup d'état all, all day long? I might. I might, yeah. I might make my word. I might make my word today. So, um, I. I <laughs> As to Brady and Peyton, yeah. there's a lot of people who are upset. That, that we're right? That, no, oh. no. That they... They get off free. They get off, as you would say, I, once upon a time, scotch-free. 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 Damn. They are scotch-free scotch here. Scotch-free. Now, you can't discipline the player because that's part of the collective bargaining process. And it's never been a crime to be the one who's tampered with, even if you are actively involved in it. Yeah. It's kind of weird. I remember there have been occasions where, for example, a star player on a team knows he's going to be cut if he doesn't take a pay cut. And he's dealing with that, okay, I'm going to make 10. They want me to make five. What do I do? Well, let's find out what's behind door number yeah, two. Exactly. Let's start calling let's call around teams. to the team. Right. There's no violation in the player or the agent doing it the violation comes from the teams engaging in the conversation. Yeah. So that's the way it's always been when it comes to players. With a coach, they could if they want to because the coaches aren't in a union. They could change the rules whenever they want. And they could say that any coach that's involved in tampering, you know what, maybe they will in the, in the aftermath of this, a coach that's involved in tampering who's the one who's being tampered with will be subject to potential action. And as a practical matter, look – it was going to happen again this year with Peyton. Everyone was on notice that Peyton's coming back in 2023. Do you think this affects it? Uh, well, look at it this way. If you're a team that has a coach that you're not 100% sold on and maybe you would push him overboard if you could get Sean Peyton, yeah. you don't have any way of lining it up ahead of time. You can't, you can't get the two in the bush while still holding the bird in the hand. That's what Jerry Jones did when he flirted with Peyton. Right. It, it didn't happen with the Dolphins because they were already looking for a coach. So you think but maybe they wouldn't have fired Flores. On them now maybe they wouldn't have fired Flores if they thought they weren't going to get Peyton. I don't know. I, I don't know. But it, but, I but would what think it, not. But what it does is it, it makes it much harder for the Chargers, the Cowboys, the Dolphins were mentioned by Barry Jackson, the Miami Herald. I don't think the Dolphins are going to be talking to Sean Payton at any point this year, no matter how bad the Dolphins may be. The, the, the Brady Payton to Miami in 2023, probably not happening, even though it was still potentially going to happen. The Panthers have been mentioned. And remember, the Panthers did kind of a not all that full throated denial when it came out that the Panthers were thinking about right. Tom Brady or, or Sean Payton, Payton in 2023. I think that it makes it much more difficult, and I think anybody who would pursue Sean Payton is going to have to do it the right way by the book. Yeah, okay. Which means you have to have already fired your coach, not hey, you know, maybe I'll fire my coach if I can get Sean Payton, but otherwise I'm keeping my coach. 
So it makes it harder for Peyton to have a perfect landing spot. Yeah. He wants warm weather, great team, and final say. And now it can't. I, I think it would be very foolish because somebody told me yesterday the owners are getting together next week in Minnesota to give approval to the Broncos sale. Yeah. And there's an expectation that Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the league, is going to let them all hear about it when it comes to tampering and tanking. And I think what will happen is for a year or two, yeah, like anything else, they're paying attention now. They'll be strict. They'll be strict. And then They'll be they'll careful. Fall by the wayside. And then, and then yeah, because well, they just can't keep up with all of it. Well, they yeah. can't. They can't enforce it. They don't want to enforce it. They don't want to get in the habit of issuing statements like this that lets the world know we got a bunch of corrupt organizations that break the rules all the time. Because mm. you know what? You know what, folks? Hurts the integrity of the they game. Got, they got a bunch of corrupt organizations that break the rules all the time. But they don't want to advertise that sure. to Congress. Yeah. And it's only in the most rare cases where they have no other alternative like this one that they do it. Well, yeah, no alternative like this one. And then I think the times of the Deshaun Watson thing, like you said, there's no coincidence that it's put out there and that maybe, you know, they, they want to make a statement here that they do come down hard on owners for Saints sure. Saints bounty scandal. Yeah. Saints bounty scandal. But That's the last time that they have banged the drum this loudly because player health and safety. We got to show that we're serious about player health and safety, even though everybody's got a bounty program in some form or another, some sort of incentive for applying a clean legal hit that renders your opponent incapacitated and unable to continue. Everybody did it. We don't care about everybody else. We don't want the world to know that everybody's doing it. We don't, we don't need to worry about the fact that Greg Williams had a bounty program every other team he was with. We're not going to go there. Yeah, no doubt. We just want to focus on this one because, again, if you make it look too egregious that's when you have to worry about legislative administrative and judicial well, yeah. oversight make some and interference no and institutional people start, control people there. start getting prosecuted right right at some point people start and and i've had folks in the know raise with me almost amazement but this when, is not when you that, consider, that's tanking but you think it would get that serious with just tampering no, and stuff no, like no, that because no, 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 those no, are no, no. Yeah. but but i think that if uh, you still don't want you still don't want to say to the world, hey, you know what? Everybody does this. Yeah. That we've got a rule against it and everybody violates it. I just think that's the kind of thing that could get the attention of people who would say, well, what other rules do they have that everybody's violating right. and they're not enforcing? Yeah, I got you. I got you. So, so tampering is one that I think they could go there because you're right. Congress isn't going to care about this. Right. There's not going to be some prosecutor somewhere. This is the point I was making. There's prosecutors everywhere who have a ton of discretion. And you put a pelt on the wall or on the horse, as the case may be. This is, the, this is a pretty big pelt if you can take on the NFL and prove that somebody is violating the law in some way. But I think that's why they went with tampering and not tanking. And this is where we pivot to tanking. Well, let me just say one thing, too. I don't think it's going to affect the Sean Payton sweepstakes when at the end of the year. I don't. I mean, I, I still think the guy wants to coach football for sure. And I do think that, okay, maybe somebody won't be as egregious or aggressive, but, uh, I mean, still a phone call to Don Yee. Oh, hey, we're talking about There's this. still a way to do it. Exactly. Still, we we're talking about yeah. this. And, hey, what about Sean? What's going on with him? Oh, is he really? Oh, hey, hey, we might get rid of our coach this year. Here's, here's so the key. that's where I, he's you, too hot of a commodity. You have to be more discreet. Yeah. That's, that's gotcha. the key. Use the burner phones. Don't talk to anybody about it. Yep. Make sure no one knows and all tracks are covered. Right. And don't be nonchalant and loose with it. I think people were just getting a little too casual because they're thinking they're not going to they're, they're not, not going to do, do anything. anything. All right, one more question before you go to the tanking thing right. that I want to just bring up with the, the the tampering thing. What do you what do you think about? I mean, where do you think Brady's at in the locker room today? I mean, do you? If you Happy were, birthday, Tom. Well, if you were in the locker room and you were in Tampa Bay, which you know, again. Um, I, there's a part of me that loves this because I got, when we talked about this on air and I talked about it a few, I got some major pushback from some major players in the front offices of these teams. Oh, I know you did. I did. And I sent a snarky text back to one of them <laughs> yesterday. Like, huh, seems like something broke. Might've been right. But that, that is, uh, annoying. My point is how do you think Brady's viewed in the locker room today? I mean, that, that's gotta be a little uncomfortable for him going in there, going with a bunch of guys that are going, damn, he didn't even really want to be here this year. He was trying to get the hell out of here and he's still our quarterback. First of all, there's a chance that not many even, even know about yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Cause they're caught up in the day in and day out the grind and getting ready for week one yeah. and it's training camp. And a lot of guys just aren't engaged in the news the way that the ardent fans are. No, but I not. assume that some this way, one, somehow it's trickled in. This one is for sure. That he was talking to the Dolphins and was going to play for the Dolphins. I'm but I, I kind of think that – don't some of them already know – what what the deal was probably uh, you and know he's tom brady and they're just not going to worry about it because he's yeah, playing a game that they can't imagine he's here with us right. and he's all in with us right 
this year. Yep. And his favorite Super Bowl championship is always the next one. He's locked in and he's loaded and he's ready to try to win a Super Bowl. So I, I think they all assume they're in the last year with Tom Brady anyway. So I think they process it because they have the mutual goal of trying to be yeah, as good the as they Bowl. can be and win. Right, and right. Even if anybody would have the nerve – to dare mention it to Tom in his presence. Because I could see some people talking about it when he's out of the room. Like, what do you think of that? Well, you know, you know but I, I don't I don't think it's going to be an issue yeah. because it's Tom Brady. Yeah, I, I understand, too. Yeah, I, I think you get some side eye. You get some guys that are like, man, he didn't really want to be here. But you're right. I think it just goes. He is here by. now. He's though. here he's now. He's back. Exactly he's here, right. And we're going forward. Exactly. We're trying to, we're yeah. trying to win. That, so, that, that's the mindset of the athlete. And, and I don't know. Does, would, would If you were Tom Brady, would you address the elephant in the room or would you just, just keep doing your thing and act like it's not even there? I think oof, that's a good question. I'd probably just act like it's not a thing and just keep going about my business. Yeah. Just, and, and again, I think you're right. I think the point that you made with the players, uh, yeah, it's Tom Brady. This is, it's another level of stratosphere of connections, things he's doing, people he knows, all of that legacy. It's at a greater, a greater, you know, deal with him. And I, I think players can comp compartmentalize that. For some people, the rules that apply to the rest of us just don't apply. For some people, even though for everyone else in the oh, world, well, if it happened, there would be accountability. Whoa. There's just no accountability. Do you know what I thought there of, are, too? There are some people you know. who may – maybe they used to golf together. I don't know. Well, I can't I, remember. I, but I, maybe for some people, I there's just know. no accountability. Hey, are you, I know. I, you know what subject I want to bring up. <laughs> you know. I mean, to me, Let's it's just more on. evidence to go, the Let's rules don't on. matter to this guy. Let's move on to And tanking. if you don't think he took the air out of the balls, Let's you're crazy on, on a 55-degree no. winter night. The balls don't deflate that much. I thought you were talking about something else. No, I, I know what you were talking I'm not All going right. there. I'm talking about the other you scandal. You know, that was also in January. Right. That also happened in a January. A different January. Okay, a different day in January. But anyway, okay. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.